lunch. Come back soon. Get the other half of my tip. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV characters who live financially unrealistic lives. Come in! Welcome to the Williamsburg Experience. There are no jobs out there. And I've even checked outer space. Um, yeah. I want to like, feel like adults live in this place. For this list, we're going over the characters whose spending habits and expenses would not make sense with their income. If there's a financially impossible TV character it's unrealistic that we missed, let us know in the comments. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Rachel and Kurt, Glee. Okay, this is ridiculous. If I'm gonna be paying a third of the rent, I'm going to be needing a third of the shelf space. Don't get too comfortable, okay? This is only temporary. I don't even think you need all of these beauty products, Rachel. New York apartments and TV shows are notoriously more affordable than they are in real life. And it's especially unbelievable for Rachel and Kurt to be able to afford theirs. Not only is it gigantic, but the two of them don't even have paying jobs when they get it. You are a diva, and you have been a nightmare. Although it's possible some of their combined three dads helped with the rent and other expenses, having a dad who's big on Broadway or a congressman isn't a reliable way to make your way in the world for most of us. Yeah, well, I couldn't imagine you guys celebrating Christmas without a real tree. Number nine, Dexter Morgan. Dexter. Dexter Morgan, good suburban husband, happy father of three, on paper anyway. Dexter may be a serial killer, but what's really criminal is how he juggles all the expenses he accrues. People fake a lot of human interactions, but I feel like I fake them all. By day, Dexter works as a blood spatter analyst for Miami Homicide. Most lab technicians make around $50,000 a year. And yet Dexter is able to buy or pay rent on a beachside apartment, a boat, a car, and a house during the show. Carpools and swimming pools. How much are we living the dream? So much. <laughs> Not only that, he's also the sole earner for his wife, stepchildren, son, and manages to pay for a nanny in later seasons. Then there's all the money he spends on plastic wrap, gas for his boat and car, and everything else it takes to be a successful murderer. Are we sure he's not moonlighting as a thief, too? Normally I bring my own plastic, but I had to improvise. Number 8. Spencer Shea, iCarly. Spencer Shea is the titular Carly's eccentric older brother. Her sole guardian, they live together in a huge apartment in Seattle. I'm not going to need this because I want Carly to stay here with you. Spencer doesn't hold down a steady job throughout the show, mainly pursuing his art projects, most of which tend to end up on fire, just like everything else. And I am very responsible no matter what you say. I know everything that goes on around here. Uh, guys? What? <gasps> fire! Although their father is a colonel in the Air Force and is stated to send money home, it still stretches belief that someone like Spencer is able to budget responsibly, particularly with everything he and his sister get up to. Maybe he's supplementing things with some money left over from when he dropped out of law school. Just keep sending money. <laughs> Number 7. Max and Caroline. Two broke girls. That couple that just left? A $50 check? A $1.47 tip? 47 cents? Uh, I wasn't even aware they were still making pennies. <laughs> Come on, it's right in the title. These two gals primarily work for minimum wage or less, albeit with tips, at a diner. Despite this, they're able to afford a decent apartment, again in New York. I worked at the Victoria's Secret at the mall for one day. Got fired for eating Panda Express over the thongs. <laughs> <laughs> this is Max, I'm Caroline. I used to be rich. Also, contrary to what the show would have us believe, the part of Brooklyn they live in is actually pretty upscale, so it would not be cheap. Come in! Welcome to the Williamsburg Experience! After the duo launches several businesses, their lifestyle becomes slightly more believable. But for much of the show, we have to take the title and premise with a grain or a bucket or two of salt. I cannot believe my eyes! Number 6. Jack McFarlane, Will & Grace How are you holding up since you got fired from Jack Talk? Honestly, care. I'm a Chad Lowe. Jack may be an icon, but he shouldn't be a role model for your career path. 
For much of the show, Jack switches jobs practically every episode, albeit with the ultimate goal of supporting his acting career. Can you believe it? Me, a Banana Republic sales associate. And my guidance counselor said I'd never amount to anything. <laughs> Still, as any actor will tell you, it's best to have a steady job to support what can be an inconsistent career. I said farewell to acting, not once, not twice, but thrice times. <laughs> Jack's approach is inconsistent on both counts. Although he does receive support from Will, Grace, and especially Karen, it's a little puzzling how he managed to make ends meet without their help. Also, he didn't pay taxes until after the show began. A red letter from the IRS? How many of these have you got? Who knows, it's like every week with those guys. <laughs> Number five, Joey Tribbiani, Friends. How much do I owe you? What? Give me a number, I don't wanna owe you anything. You don't owe me anything, I don't want your money. Ah, 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 we're doing this. The characters on Friends are consistently pointed out as living lives that are not financially sensible. And while it was tempting to choose Rachel, she at least has pretty steady employment and lives in a rent-controlled apartment. Oh, this is not that bad. Oh, you're fine, yeah, for a first job? You can totally, totally live on this. Joey does not, mostly. A struggling actor for most of the show, Joey does get several high-paying gigs, such as his stint on Days of Our Lives. However, most of the time, Joey doesn't have steady employment, only occasionally supplementing his income by working at Central Park or other odd jobs. Altogether, that's $12.75. This coming from the man who couldn't split our $80 phone bill in half. <laughs> he owes his roomie slash bestie Chandler a whole lot of money, too. Okay, uh, two, three years of rent, utilities, food. Then there's that time he got a hernia and couldn't pay his insurance. It's not a check. They're saying your health insurance expired because you didn't work enough last year. Let me see that. The guy does not have his finances together. Number four, Hannah Horvath, Girls. I want to like feel like adults live in this place. It's really hard to take Hannah seriously as a struggling writer when her struggles are way easier than they would be in real life. Although initially supported by her parents, Hannah is cut off and goes through several jobs early on. Hannah Horvath's office? Mike Lawson, please. Okay, um, I'm new here, so uh, maybe you just... Although her time working for GQ paid well, she quit and became a teacher, which, in case you're unfamiliar with the American education system, pays poorly. I could be a teacher. There's no way Hannah could realistically afford her apartment with the kind of money she makes, much less be able to support a child, something she's well aware of before she goes ahead with it anyway. You're not ready for this. No, you're not ready for this. And then she just happens to luck out and get a high paying teaching job. But I think that I may be the voice of my generation, or at least a voice of a generation. She is a voice, all right, of herself. Number three, Cosmo Kramer, Seinfeld. We'll say this for the rest of our entries. At least they have jobs. Kramer, not so much. How much are they paying? No, 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 I don't want any pay. <laughs> I'm doing this just for me, <laughs> clearly. Jerry Seinfeld's wild-haired neighbor hardly ever seems to do any work and seems to do whatever he wants whenever. He even pretends to go to a normal job just for fun. Although he seems to get most of his food by leeching off of Jerry, it's still baffling how Kramer manages to make rent without a steady source of income. We'll grant you that he's had some million dollar ideas, like his coffee table book about coffee tables, but they're few and far between among his legion of harebrained schemes to get rich quick. Hey, how about if the book came with these little fold out legs, so the book itself becomes a coffee table? George is right. People would pay to live like Kramer for a week. People should plunk down $2,000 to live like him for a week. <laughs> Do nothing, fall ass backwards in the money, mooch food off your neighbors and have sex without dating. That's a fantasy <laughs> game. Number two, Carrie Bradshaw, Sex and the City. But the more words we invent, the harder it becomes to define things. This is a big one, people. Carrie is a weekly columnist for a newspaper for much of the early part of the show, with her writing about her and her friends' sexual escapades providing much of the fodder for the titular column. More and more single women of a certain age are looking for a certain thing, and that certain thing does not necessarily involve a certain ring. And yet, she's able to live in a nice apartment, afford designer clothes, and all those cosmos with the girls, just by writing, what, four or five pieces a month? We couldn't help but wonder, how is this even possible? As I walked home, I couldn't help but wonder, was it Mr. Big? 
Was it New York or was it me? It becomes slightly less unbelievable after she starts writing for Vogue and some of her articles are made into a book, but not by much. I had just submitted my first freelance article for one of the most relevant and provocative magazines on the newsstands today, at least to me, Vogue. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Peter Griffin, Family Guy, crazy schemes and outrageous purchases. How can he afford these things? To the Hendon, Peter! Oh my God! Joe, I am so sorry. How can you afford these things? Death Clock, Metalocalypse. The richest, most powerful rock stars in the world are also complete morons. Hey! Yes? Give me $50,000. Well, uh, what do you need it for? Doritos! What difference does it make? Well, Jeez. you've uh, been given your $100,000 allowance for a week. So what? Come on, uh, money, man! Come on, 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 come All of you are wasting money by not having finished this record. That's a big deal, guys. Kara Zorel, Supergirl. Supergirl works as an assistant, yet she has a huge apartment and no roommates. Where do I start? Mark almost got fired today. Who? Mark. Uh, Mike. Monel. He doesn't take his job seriously at all. It's, it's really like he has never worked a day in his life. April and Andy. Parks and Recreation. Sure, they live pretty frugally, but they're still assistants for government officials. Okay, you have to pay these. Good thing I didn't lose them. Okay, new lesson, basic finance. I'm gonna teach you how to balance a checkbook. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Penny, the Big Bang Theory. Great Caesar's ghost look at this place. <laughs> Penny may live across from and become romantically involved with scientists, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that she cannot afford to live the way she does. Unlike Leonard and Sheldon, she spends a significant portion of the series living in her apartment alone. It's baffling how she's able to afford her big apartment on a salary working at the Cheesecake Factory, much less all of her shoes. Oh, thank you very much. Come back soon. Get the other half of my tip. <laughs> her attempts at an acting career are pretty disastrous, too. It's possible her parents are supporting her, though she definitely owes Leonard for covering her rent. What am I up to now? Well, okay, uh, with the Indian food, the pizza, the Thai food, the tank of gas, the frozen yogurt, and your rent, uh, <laughs> a little over $1,400. Sure, Penny eventually begins making bank as a pharmaceutical rep, but how she stayed afloat before she got that job is a mystery. I'm always excited for you. I'm excited that you found this new job where you're making decent money. Decent? I make twice what you make. Wait, twice? Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here. Oh, for